Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for the kind invitation. And unfortunately, again, uh, uh, it's impossible to be live uh, in uh, your wonderful country, but uh, I hope to be able soon uh, the opportunity to be back. Uh, my topic today is a quite advanced topic, and uh, it's a focus on the meaning of uh, management of hyperglycemia uh, today. These are my conflict of, of interest. So, you know, from uh, the old study, the DCCT followed by EDIC, um, st EDIC study, meaning uh, from the long-term uh, survey of the DCCT, that uh, uh, intensive glycemic control can impact not only in the, pre the prevention of microvascular complications, but also of microvascular, cardiovascular complications in uh, type 1. This requires time. Uh, you see in the, the DCCT EDIC study, almost 20 years were needed in order to uh, demonstrate this uh, correlation. Similarly, in uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, the effect of intensive glycemic control also on cardiovascular event was uh, shown in the UK PTS. Again, uh, many years were required to co confirm this hypothesis, but the data are there. So, um, glycemic control can contribute to prevent cardiovascular complications in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And all this, uh, uh, the aspect of the type 2 diabetes and the glycemic control and cardiovascular disease have been confirmed uh, by several meta-analyses. This is one of them. You showed that clearly um, an intensive glycemic control at any stage of the disease uh, was able to increase the, the chance to, uh, re, uh, to avoid the new cardiovascular events, not influencing the overall cardiovascular uh, total mortality, which you know was an issue in the ACCORD study. So at the end of the day, uh, all these study were focused on A1C as gold standard in order to evaluate the glycemic control. And uh, clearly, you know that uh, there is, a, has been reported, a very good correlation between fasting plasma glucose and the level of A1C in type 2 diabetes. So, if A1C represents the overall glycemic control and is a very good uh, standard uh, to assess the glycemic control over time, if somebody, particularly with the type 1 diabetes, why type 1? Because type 1 diabetes usually is not accompanied by other, um, uh, com other uh, comorbidities like, uh, for example, obesity, uh, hypertension, dyslipidemia, particularly these people are generally young. You know, if A1C is enough, if somebody with type 1 diabetes, as a good A1C control over the lifetime, the risk of uh, complications, particularly of cardiovascular complications, should be zero related to glycemic control. But this is not the case. The, the Swedish Diabetes Registry, which is one of the best registries in the world, including almost all the population of Sweden, reported some years ago that even in people, in people with type 1 diabetes, having an A1C level of 6.9 all over during the, uh, the, uh, their life, even these people, the risk for death or for cardiovascular complication was twice as high as the risk for major controls. So meaning that there is something else which is not fully explained by A1C. Uh, you know that one of the first uh, aspect, new aspect of a glycemia was uh, the postprandial hyperglycemia. Several studies reported that after the meal, 
what happens in postprandial state is uh, very different in people, in normal people and people with diabetes. And usually you have a, a peak of hyperglycemia after the meal. And the IDF 2018 and uh, then in 2011 uh, updated the guidelines on the specific topic of managing postprandial hyperglycemia to avoid complications and to improve the overall glycemic control. And the most important recommendation, a very high level, one plus, was that targeting both postprandial plasma glucose and fasting plasma glucose is an important strategy for achieving optimal glycemic control. And there is no doubt about this today. However, Usually in clinical practice, we test postprandial hyperglycemia after two hours uh, after the start of the meal. Why? There is evidence that probably what happens after one hour could be even more relevant than what happens after two hours. Why? The most easy explanation is that after one hour, usually, oh, after a meal or during an OGTT, the level of hyperglycemia is higher than do that at two hours. And being higher the level of glycemia, clearly you have more damage related to hyperglycemia. And so that the, the, the concept is that at the peak level of hyperglycemia, which usually is seen after one hour after the meal, uh, is the most dangerous uh, situation. But the paradox is that while in clinical practice, usually uh, postprandial hyperglycemia is uh, checked after two hours, in the guidelines, you already find the recommendation to measure postprandial hyperglycemia between an hour and an hour and a half. It is, it is included in all the guidelines, so meaning that the ADAs, the other guidelines, AAC, or even, of course, the IDF guide. So something which seems to be new, but is not already uh, new because already uh, recommended in the most relevant international guidelines. Another aspect of glycemia is what happens during the day in terms of fluctuation of glycemia. This is an old star, uh, all our personal data showing that in uh, nine people in, uh, with type 1 diabetes, in the apparent good glycemic control, the mean A1C of 6.7%, when you have a, a when you make a CGM, the situation is not good. You see how widely is going up and down the glycemia. And we have evidence underlying this review we published a few years ago that today we have a strong evidence that glucose variability is an independent risk factor for complications, including cardiovascular complications. The first evidence was coming from Verona. This is a study, the first study showing that the variability in 10 years of fasting plasma glucose was accompanied by a high risk of cardiovascular mortality in type 2 diabetes. In evidence supported by several other uh, epidemiological studies, but particularly by postdoc analysis of very well recognized trials like the ADVAN, the DEVO, the BATT, FRAG, all had an accord. So, in all these trials, there is a postdoc analysis confirming that glucose variability, A1C variability, fasting glucose variability is associated to high risk of complications, particularly cardiovascular complications. And we recently confirmed using the, the Swedish Diabetes Registry that glucose variability in terms of A1C variability is associated with almost all kinds of cardiovascular complications. But the most intriguing evidence was to, to find out that this is particularly true for people in good glycemic control. It seems a, a paradox. People showing an A1C at target, having 
higher level of glucose variability, they are more exposed to the risk of cardiovascular complications than people in uh, poor glycemic control. This must be taken into account, of course, considering uh, that uh, when we see just an A1C at target, we could be, uh, let us say, reassured about uh, the risk, but this is not true. On the, on the contrary, in these people, the risk for complication is higher than in people in worse uh, glycemic control, at least for what is related to glucose variability. And we have some measures in order to understand where we are in terms of glucose variability. This consensus published uh, five years ago, you see that the coefficient of variation of 33 to 36% is considered uh, a good coefficient of variation in terms that is acceptable, higher is not acceptable. What we are still missing is uh, a coefficient of variation for long-term variability, meaning in terms of A1C variability over time. But the evidence is there, so anyhow, we, we, we should do all the best in order to avoid glucose variability. But also uh, is emerging another important uh, target for glycemic control, the timing range. I think the concept is quite immediate. Timing range means how much time somebody spends in a normal range of glycemia. But in terms of glycemic control, the concept is more is a little bit different. This, this simply approach, simplified approach, because clearly, in diabetes uh, there is a wide variation, and this is why the timing range is not considered just as in the normal value of a glycemia as seen in normal people. But you see, the normal range is considered the time spent between. 3.9 and 7.8 millimolar liter uh, as standard acceptable uh, range of a glycemic control. And the impact of this concept is clearly showed this uh, slide. You see that the three people with the, the same A1C, but with a different amount of time range during a 24 hour. Uh, glucose monitoring, continuous glucose monitoring, describes completely different situation. According to the amount spent in the time range, we can consider people in poor, acceptable, or optimal glycemic control. Another aspect is that using just SMBG, SMBG can be not, cannot be enough to, to catch all the aspects of glycemia over the day, why well, you see that in the same patient, according to the CGM, you see different some aspect which you do not catch if you just use SMBG. And also, we are starting to have evidence that timing range is related to the risk of a complication. So, uh, which is immediately understandable, meaning that there is the time spent in normal glycemia higher is the chance to avoid the complications is already there in terms of evidence. But when we speak about glucose variability, we do not speak only about peaks of glycemia, but also in terms of nadir, meaning the risk of hypoglycemia. And it's really um, worth of interest to underline that high glucose variability is linked to high risk of hypoglycemia. And we know very well that hypoglycemia is a strongly related to an increased risk for complications, particularly for cardiovascular complications. Probably what is less recognized is that hypoglycemia is also a pro atherosclerotic factor. So anytime there is an a hypoglycemic episode, all the pathways activated by hyperglycemia, the same pathways are activated so leading to higher risk for atherosclerosis and of course for cardiovascular complications. So hypoglycemia must be avoided. But this seems not enough because when you have hypoglycemia, 
usually what is uh, the effort the, uh, is uh, the, to, uh, to increase glycemia as soon as possible. But it seems that this approach is not the best. In this in vitro study performed in cells, but also in animals, it, uh, you see that when uh, the neurons in, as a cells or in, um, they, or in animals, they were, and in hypoglycemia was induced. And then the hypoglycemia was recovered by hyperglycemia or by normal glycemia. The recovery with the hyperglycemia was accompanied by an increase of oxidative stress generation. It seems that a phenomenon like ischemia reperfusion uh, happens and uh, uh, free radicals and oxidative stress are generated. And we know that oxidative stress is very important for the pathogenesis of diabetic complications. But this, unfortunately, is not true only for cells and animals, but also for human beings. You see here that in this uh, study, hypoglycemia, induced hypoglycemia, was induced by the, uh, the appearance of endothelial dysfunction, of the oxidative stress and inflammation. And when this hypoglycemia was recovered, producing hyperglycemia, the situation was worse, meaning that even recovering the hypoglycemia, the effect on the cardiovascular risk was increased when we produce hyperglycemia post. In terms of a mechanism, already I anticipated that oxidative stress is the key player and is a well, very well recognized accepted that the hyperglycemia produce at the mitochondrial level an overgeneration of free radicals, the superoxide anion particularly, which activates the several pathways leading to the risk of complications. But what is the worst? of, the, of uh, mentioning is that the same pathways are activated by all the, all the different kind of hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia or post-hypoglycemia effect I have described. There is evidence from, by coming from in vitro and in human studies that the same pathways activated by hyperglycemia are also activated in all these situations. So this is a kind of really can contribute to explain why all these aspects of hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia are related to increase the risk for complications. Over here, you see we have a, a, an important change in the concept of managing glycemic diabetes. You see here, at a very long time, the A1C was just the best and the only good standard uh, gold marker we had to assess the level of a glycemic control. But in time, you see that all these new aspects uh, were emerging and so contributing to, uh, in one side, to complicate the story, but in other side, to give more explanation for what should be the best approach for the management of hyperglycemia today in people with diabetes. And the perfect management of hyperglycemia today, according to this uh, picture published in Diabetes Care uh, just a couple of years ago, you see here that the perfect management using the drawing of Leonardo da Vinci, which is an expression of perfection in terms of uh, measures, you see that it's important not only the control of uh, A1C and fasting glucose, but also the timing range, the short and long term glucose variability, one hour and two hour PPG, hypoglycemia, and how you recover from hypoglycemia. It's a very complex, uh, I understand, uh, um, approach, particularly from a clinical point of view. But we have a lot of uh, new tools uh, to fight against this uh, complex situation. We have new drugs particularly, you know, fast-acting insulin, GLP-1, SGLT-2, are very effective in controlling this uh, as new aspect of hyperglycemia. But also there are important uh, technical new tools which can also improve the control of the complexity of hyperglycemia today. So, in conclusion, I see that we have this, uh, this is a well-known, uh, 
the ADA is the algorithm for the management of diabetes, which, which suggests that according to the presence of a cardiovascular complication, kidney disease or heart failure, you choose, we can choose the best option for the treatment. But also, not only in such situation, but even when this situation are not present, the glycemic control is still mandatory. My recommendation is that today, glycemic control is something more complex and cannot be focused only on A1C, but on all these new aspect of parameters, which could, should be taken into consideration for a real modern approach for the management of hyperglycemia today. Thank you very much for the attention.